Hit me. Uh, yeah. Capital City Podcast. I'm your host, Capital J, alongside my main man, DL Glass. Now, <clears throat> I was talking to my son in the car the other day. Mm. And we were listening to a throwback station. Okay. And what's the throwback station? The throwback station. This is a, a new station here in the area. Okay. 95.3. Okay. The beat. You know, that's, I do a mix on there on the noon day mix, the noon mini mix. Okay. Okay. And since I've been doing that mix, I've been listening to the content of some of the songs that I've been pulling out and playing in the mix. And I listen to some of the stuff they play. And Arrested Development came on Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee. Tennessee. <laughs> People and, every day. Yeah, right. And. And I was telling my son, listen to this song. This group right here was one of the number one groups of that era. And there's nothing in here about shooting, doing drugs, selling drugs, or having sex with anybody. And I was explaining it to my son that there was a time when this is just not what all the music was about. Absolutely. And... I do middle school parties sometimes now. Okay. And when it's time to play certain current songs in the hip hop genre. Yes. I'm like, well, even when you take the curse words out, I don't know <laughs> if this is appropriate. Right. You know what I mean? And this was something that wasn't a question hmm. back in the day, late right. 80s, early 90s. There were plenty of songs I could pull out. And. I was telling him, hey, man, what we're hearing today is not because, just simply because the people demand filth. Just because filth is what is given to us. Hmm. Let's put it in terms of food. Okay. When your parents own the house, they don't let you eat McDonald's every day. Right. McDonald's tastes good. And it, as a child, you will choose McDonald's. But a good parent is not going to feed you McDonald's every day. <laughs> right? Don't say a good parent, that type of parent. Every day, a good parent <laughs> is not going to feed their child McDonald's <laughs> every day. Because it's, it's unhealthy. I'm just saying, I'm not saying you can't have McDonald's sometimes. Right. But every now and then say, you know what, I need to get his kids some broccoli. Because, you know, as a parent, yeah. you're going to say, hey, you got to balance things out. Right, right. And what I was explaining to my son is that at one time, the parents of hip-hop used to be people who cared about us. Hmm. And they wouldn't feed stuff that's not good for us. To their kids every day. Once you remove those parents. And we had these new step parents in charge. They will feed us anything. And the stuff that the kids are being fed today. Is not healthy. Hmm. So I was explaining to him about. How. As much as people make the argument. That, well, this is this what sells, and we're just trying to make money. Hmm. Well, Queen Latifah made money, and she said, who you calling a bitch? Yes. Public Enemy made money. They said fight the power. Hmm. Lauren Hill made money. She said some guys are only after that thing. <laughs> and another thing I was explaining to my son is when you allow those types of artists the same platform that you give any other artist that that is spitting unhealthy verses, people followed it. And when those artists were out, you had girls that wanted to be more like Queen Latifah. You had, when Arrested Development was out, you had people 
who dressed in African garb. Public enemy. You saw people wearing Africa medallions. So the question I ask is, is the music like this because we want it? Or is it like this because this is the only thing we're being fed? If McDonald's is the only thing you're being fed, and I'm not saying McDonald's is not delicious because some of this, this music is still, some of it's good, good music. Okay. But is the content healthy? And if that's the only thing you're fed, then, of course, they, you know, when you get hungry, that's what you're going to ask for. Or can the same type of music work today? Could a movement be started today by an artist who's popular? Can he make people want something other than sex, drugs, and guns? Yes. Or she? I think so. Yes. I know a couple examples. And I think I think that um they work they work so hard at their craft to make sure that they stay um, competitive to what we pr- predominantly see now. And I think, like, uh, and I hate to use a North Carolina example, but J. Cole, mm-hmm. like, <clears throat> J. Cole could sell out those same arenas and, you know, sell just as much as any of the other ones right now. Now, I think it's unfair when you compare somebody like J. Cole to some of the newer artists because, um, you know, like a lot of people are, um, I don't know, because if you listen to J. Cole's music, right, he's on the line of being, you know, um, this straight arrow and being having that street smart um, savvy to him. He knows how to incorporate the content without endorsing it. And he makes um, music that can compete with, yep. And and that's the key part. I think that's what a lot of them are missing, that they're, they're not making the music to compete with. You know, and I can't give you a specific example of who they should be competing with. I'm talking about what's being push now right and let's let's take um let's use some recent examples Mm -hmm. if this is all you know that we're being told that this is all that sells then how does pharrell make a song like happy right that appeal to the masses everybody loved that song right i played it in the club yes yes so because you can We're play not, it anywhere. We don't just, I mean, you know, we as consumers don't just want that. It's just all that's available. And when something else that is quality is available, we consume it. That's what I was going to say. You you think about, like, you use Pharrell as an example. Like, where are you going to find another Pharrell to make another happy? Right. And that, and that song <laughs> is, a, is an outlier. <laughs> you know, you, you're you not going to find like that. That song in itself is something that, you know, you can't really duplicate too much. But I'm just saying the content of the song, it's it's almost embarrassing sometimes when I'm like, I play a lot of different styles of music. Okay. When I get to the hip hop genre, it's the only one that I had to have clean versions for. Of course. And, of course. and even when you clean it up, it's like, ugh. You know, the kids asked me for much <laughs> over and over again. I was like, I can't play that, even the clean version. Well, it, it's being played everywhere else. It is, but as a res- now in this room, when I have control over the content, Bingo. I'm not going to feed that to your kids. Absolutely. I respect that. Today, I'm not going to name the station. But I was driving through Nash County. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it ended in a point five. But I was surprised. I, I've heard this Chris Brown song so many times. Which one? <sighs> it escapes me. 
Well, let's you let's take Chris Brown for example. Hey, hey, the can, let me, let me, all most of his recent stuff. The the music and the flow and the melody, the tones could have worked with any type of lyrics they put in there. And Miley Percocets. I'm just saying. They were playing this at 2 p.m. on Saturday on a radio station. And this this goes back, this argument goes back a long way. And there was a time when that wasn't allowed. Bro, listen, I've heard this in four or five states. I've heard this same song. Driving through, listening on the radio, and this is and why I we're in the middle heard of an opioid epidemic. I never heard him say. I thought it was fake. I had to look it up. I never heard him say Molly and Percocet in this song. No matter where I heard it, I play it on the internet myself. I play the explicit version. I never heard them say Molly Percocet in this song. So you're not talking today, about future. No, I'm mask talking, off. No. You're talking about a Chris Brown song. He don't, can't remember the name of the song. I right can't now. remember the name of the song right now because I heard so much of 21 Savage for some reason today. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we heard was 21 Savage. But in the, the, this takes me back to an interview that Leo Cohen had on The Breakfast Club and Charlemagne the Guy pressed him on why he pushes this content. Yes. And he finally broke down and just said, hey, I got bills to pay, you know, basically in a nutshell. I got bills to pay and, and I'm a I'm a businessman. And this is and this is uh, you know, this is what's selling. But when other things were available, it sold too. And the point I'm making is do do they feed that to their kids? No. Some of them have no choice, but their kids probably made that choice. But do they now, expose them to it? After seeing the influence of these other artists back in the day, like, um, you know, going back to Queen Latifah, who you calling a bitch? During that time, you better not call a woman a bitch, right? Um, certain songs, you know, start trends. And just like I also said, I can yell it in your mouth. Also set a trend in a, in a different direction. So isn't there a high likelihood that that we could help reverse some of the ills that plague our community by first starting to change the content of the music we promote? I hate to go deep on this, but I get what you're saying. And what I'm going to say to that is, yes, hold the artist accountable. First and foremost, especially the ones who look like us, because what we're asking is for them to stop making the music. That's the only way or, or the consumer. Well, there's... What we do know is if they stop making music, somebody else will. So I'm not even going to put this on the shoulders of those particular artists. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say if you don't have that message and you have a different message, maybe those people need to go even harder. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. You have to you have to be just as adamant about reaching the masses with that as they are about reaching the masses with drugs, sex, and guns. Right. You have to be just as adamant about reaching the masses with messages of empowerment and uplifting the community. Right. Um, positivity. Like Lizzo got a song right now, special. Just in case nobody told you today, you're special. The song's doing fine. Right. Um, Lizzo probably didn't intend for her audience to be the demographic of folks that we're talking about, though. Well, so that's why at, the music didn't reach them. 
Well, the the thing is, that song, you know, you songs, you know, it's out there. It's out there and it's available. And, you know, for the most part, people know that record. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you put it on, you know, look at look at people light up. <laughs> you know, it, you know, I, I've I've seen, I've played it, yeah, yeah in I, front of the same people who dance to City Girls or somebody. You know, you put on special, and you know they light up a little bit, and they look at their friend and go, "Yeah, that's bad show." You know, they, they people want that too. Yes, you know. Yes, yes. And and and, and, and you know, I'm not like I said, I'm not in the point where I'm trying to blame an artist, but. I think that people who have those other messages need to be out there too and need to be just as available. And as in, so really this is a message for aspiring upcoming artists. There are more lanes and avenues. You know, like maybe, you know, the thing that helps people break is being a little bit different. Absolutely. Maybe the way to be different is to not be on that. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like everybody's doing sex, drugs, and guns. Right. So do they, do any of those new people pop up? Do they last longer than a couple of years? Nope. For the most part, yeah, because there's so many of them. So many of them. Yeah, so many of them. So it's it's really just time musically. Trends come and go. This trend has run its course. It's overdue for things to settle on something different. I I, I say in a perfect world, yes, and I say in reality, no, because I don't know if you pay attention to what's going on outside, but it's a lot of hate going on out there. The people, how you kill hate is with love. But right there, now, there needs to be more love. It, 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 you, it has to be more love because right now it's not enough. It's not enough. And yeah. and, and this this music, these, these anthems, or whatever you want to call them, is playing right into that. So until we look at, you know what I'm saying, the, the whole picture, that's why I'm like, we, we almost asking them to stop. You know, like, cause let's not act like it's not some successful that's doing this. And there's people who we never even heard of. There's, there's an artist right now who this year alone probably will make seventy five to a hundred thousand dollars on music. Right. That's all they do is music. They they probably travel with their. Forgive me, I'm not trying to downplay, but I always like to turn Chitlin Circuit. You know what I'm saying? Traveling with. This company doing these shows or whatever, they go out, they do their promo. I met a few of them, you know, and I was like, damn, like, okay, I see what's going yeah. on here. And they're getting it. Yes, <clears throat> they're getting it. And that's why I say you you can't expect that to stop. I'm not saying that 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 that, that any of that should come to an immediate end. What mm-hmm. I'm saying is there needs to be the other stuff too. Even when, um, you know, all of these people I just mentioned earlier existed at the same time as the NWA and Two Live Crew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They coexisted. LL Cool J wasn't killing people. No. And during this time period, you know, NWA, um, you know, for every LL, like Boogie Down Productions in the early days, they were, you know, pretty gangster. And for every one of them, you had... A day law. Yeah, tribe, you got NWA. But I I don't think we can add like during this time though, um, that hip hop was still what like a toddler at this point. It was. You know what I'm saying? So but it's so it new. was a toddler though, and the people who like let's think about who put those records out. Mm-hmm. The the people who were in charge, the A and R's and the people who decided what was gonna happen. Absolutely. Those people were our parents and they didn't feed us stuff that was bad for us all the time. 
And then, but then you have to look at who was feeding them. Th- that part hasn't changed. If if I'm feeding you for the financial gain, I don't care what you're putting. I'm not paying attention right now because you're giving me this gain. Capitalism, you remember? That's yeah. That's what and, it comes down to. Yeah, it, and but but what I'm saying is, even in the capitalist part of it um you know these these people also made money off of positive messages yes yes you know so where where does it benefit them for us to have all this negative imagery when they also benefited when the music did not contain that content okay um, and, and this is just me playing devil's advocate. I'm going to mm-hmm. go back to the example of J. Cole. Because uh, from my understanding, it took J. Cole a minute before he got his radio hit. And then he found a formula to make radio hits every time he dropped a project. Right. Is how he built his... Uh, following because J. Cole has a following just like one of these other rappers who is talking about shoot him up and shit. And, and I want to add too that when J. Cole puts a festival on, the people who come, who listen to that kind of music, here goes yeah. how powerful the influence is. When he puts a festival on, yeah. the city of Raleigh welcomes mm. the fans with open arms. Right. They come and they go. Nobody gets shot. Nobody gets stabbed. Nothing. Not even an argument. Right. And the crazy part about it is the those same fans, those same peaceful fans. That they listen speaking, to all this other stuff too. Yes, because that's, the first night. And that's that's my point. <laughs> yes. That's my point is the power of the music. Yes. So do do so are those. These are some of the same people that would go if Twenty One Savage, Future, and Lil Dirt came. Half of those people would be at that show too. Yes, but they had to be Future, Lil Dirt, and the the other guys you just named. They had to make so, the same kind of music. Yes. So with that being said, but to change the message in the music. Can can they do that? I'm not I'm not asking Future and Lil Dirk and all of them to change their message. You know, this is that it, it's a free society. Do you? What I'm asking is right now, okay, the people in charge of promoting mm-hmm. this stuff, I'm telling you, as a member of this community that we are more broad and diverse than just sex, drugs, and guns. Yes. And you can make money selling more than that to our community. Right. Absolutely. It doesn't mean that there's no place for future and all these other people. Okay. Okay. There's also, it's insulting to us that when you sell everything to everybody else and then you look at us and you say, well, we're just, all they want is sex, drugs, and guns. That's not all we want. Because when there's something else available, we eat it up. You're absolutely right. And the the, the only thing I'm going to say about that is um, when we're talking about how people consume it, and, and, and me this is me pointing the finger at everybody. You know, that that's how I try to look at things. Like somebody told me one time, there's two people do something to you, you sue everybody. Even the third person who just watched. <laughs> right. Just sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> so this this is me pointing my finger at everybody because that same music that I know for a fact, there's a woman, and I can call her name. She owns radio stations. Mm -hmm. She could stop playing the music. She could. Problem is, now, 
from from her perspective, and she stopped playing all the music, that's where I say now there has to be an onus on other artists to provide more content to replace whatever's coming off. Because right now, if you take all the music off, what do you replace it with? And then somebody has to care enough about us to spend the same type of energy and money that they spent to make doing narcotics cool. (laughs) Right. To make something else cool. Because that wasn't cool. They made it cool. They made it cool. In our community, I really, like, like, uh, 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 opioids in the black community? Yes. Is that is that was that our party drug of choice? No, no, it was made cool, right? It was make made something cool. else cool. Yes, you know you yes. can make anything you want cool. That's the power of imagery. Yes, the power of the dollar, like they did with cigarettes. You know, and cigarettes you they used to make them cool. Yes. Now they made them not cool anymore. Right, and now it's not even cool. It used to be cool because. Every time you cut the movie on, well, the, the, the main TV character was smoking a cigarette. The yeah. coolest guy in the movie had a the cigarette. Magazine. The dude on the magazine cover had a cigarette. Then they decided, yeah, it's not so cool anymore. And now when you see somebody standing 30 feet away from the entrance of a building on a corner <laughs> on a 20-degree day with a cigarette, you look at him like that poor sucker. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Still he doesn't. He's not so cool anymore. Right. Because they decided to make it not cool anymore. Do people still smoke cigarettes? Yes. Yes. Plenty of people do. Did, so, <laughs> I mean, right. But yeah. it, it's not cool the way it used to be. And right. is that an accident? No. Hmm. That took the effort of many industries. Right. The movie industry, the music industry, everybody all got together. Everybody except Big Tobacco got together to make cigarettes not cool anymore. They made it so, you know, you can't smoke in the club, you can't smoke at the restaurant. When yes. you used to be able to do all that. And the so, courts made the big cigarette companies um Because it was fun. bad for you. Yes. It made them it was into bad a fun. for you. <laughs> now, think about the influence. That that art has on life, yes, it's bad for you. And if you want to take something that's bad for you out of the community and make it uncool, you can. And, and this is along the same lines, but I can't remember if we talked about this before or not because I want to get your thoughts on this. And I understand what you're saying about music and imagery, right? It, I so, said, oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. Okay. Having sex with no condoms. I remember when yeah. Magic Johnson told everybody he had HIV. And I remember how many artists, even the most gangster artists, were like, yeah, I did that, but I had to strap up first. Yes, yes. Now, dudes brag about going raw. Do you believe it? Yes, I do. You believe Magic called it or he was just a... Uh, um, no, I believe it. They, they, got good, they got good drugs now. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got drugs. Everybody has access to whatever drugs Magic Johnson had to bring him to the levels that he's undetectable and live. Now it's access to everybody. And best believe that he had the money and the resources. He just had access to those drugs early. And now everybody does. Right. And But the thing is, you took something that was uncool. Having unprotected sex was not cool. And now? And now they're trying to make it cool. Yes. Like, that's... You know, that's bad for you. And it needs to be uncool. Catching an STD is not cool. Catching something you got to live with for the rest of your life and take medicine for so you don't die is not cool. And a good parent is going to tell you that. Hmm. So... Oh no, Jay. I, I I agree with you, but I I still I think that some accountability has to be put on the artist. And I think that, you know, this is a part of um us doing for us. If we're able 
if if this ever happens, I I honestly don't see this. Shit. I don't see it happening. <laughs> now, my thing is this: How do you hold somebody accountable with consequences? Yes. And when somebody is doing something that that you feel they should be accountable for, most of the time they don't know until they're told. Until they're when told. somebody walks in your house, if you got brand new white carpet. And somebody walks in their house with muddy shoes on and walks across your carpet, hmm. you explain to them, before they could be accountable, they need to know what they did wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. If nobody's telling them it's wrong, are they accountable? Well, it can be told. And that, that goes back to us, you know what I'm saying? And and how else can you hold some someone but we're not the only people that know that that's wrong, though. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's why I say the accountability lies everywhere. And, and you're right. <laughs> everywhere. Point Somebody got to tell. Because these, these people making this music, these are kids. They don't even know any better. They're 16, 17, 18 years old. Absolutely. Doing what they heard. But, but somewhere along the line, there's a 50-year-old man yes. with kids and grandkids. Yes. And they didn't tell them that's not okay. Hmm. So I think that person is more accountable hmm. than the child that hasn't even experienced life yet. And they never had a role model. Yes. Now, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You know, so the accountability lies yeah. in the person with the wisdom. Yeah, but And if yeah. you wouldn't feed it to your own kids and you feed it to ours, you're accountable. Jeezy. I'm just playing, man. Hey. Jesus told us to go get a, a brick, but he sent his son to college. And that, <laughs> and you know something? Originally, that was going to be the subject of the podcast about rappers promoting stuff right. that they know. Yes. They either don't do, don't want any part of. I mean, you know, and yeah. th- and I think there there does lie some accountability on the artist, too. Yes. If you don't want it for your own kids, then why are you pushing it on mine? Right. Like, um, what was the the track Cardi B did? I just be calling names. I'm bleep them out. <laughs> Cardi B did the track. What it was WAP or something. Anyway, she was um doing a dance, and uh-huh. little culture ran in the room, and she hurried to turn it off. Right. Said, Damn. Damn. Now there is an argument. To be made that, well, the artist makes the song, and they didn't make the song for a kid. That was it's not a, It's not a kid. It's not a kid song. Right. So now, the huh. now what? the responsibility lies on the person who played it for kids. Huh. Fingers you see, around you see what I'm saying? Point at everybody. Right. <laughs> There's a thing in radio called day party. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> but that's that's where some accountability lies. This his yes. music that's not for children. Yes. And you're playing it for children. <laughs> if you got the numbers of how many spins this radio station got, you got the demographic of it. Right. So you got the breakdown. I thought something was flying on there. Thank you, man. I had a hangman. <laughs> but if you, if you have any kind of demographic information, you have the breakdown of the the listeners that help your spins, and you know when they the peak time for them is to be around the radio or being transported here and there in the car. Why are you talking about uh, you? You bleep it out when he say the f one. But when he's talking about her sucking him until he can't walk, that's still said just like that. You know, I, I, <laughs> let's take a song, uh, Party Up by DMX. I got to remember that. Party. Y'all going to make me lose my mind. Yes. Up in here, yes. up in here. Party song, right? Party yes. music. Okay. Think about this, the first thing he said. Oh, your man's been to jail before? Suck my... Woo! <laughs> that's, bo- that's too... Two bars into the song. Yes. Why? 
hey, according to you, you can't mess with it, the artistic I'm, freedom. It, right. So, so when he made that song, <laughs> he made that song. Yeah. Was that song for kids? No. But I, we don't know. I, we don't know. No, it wasn't. He didn't make that song for kids. But song just it's a hit. He, and it's a party anthem. I'm pretty but sure. But years from now, people still gonna be playing it at basketball games. Pete Game. Every hip hop artist except um shout out fifty year anniversary of hip hop. But every artist now consumed hip hop at some point. And I guarantee it's around the same age as the younger ones now. So if you make rap or hip hop, you know, you're making it for the people that like it. Not, I'm not, I'm not making it for 40, 30, 20 year olds. I'm making it for people who uh, are of the culture who listen to this, whether right. they're five or six or whether they're 50 or six. At the end of the day, all these songs are really like hip hop. Really? Mm -hmm. It's for the club. And yeah. the club is an adult venue. Absolutely. That was early on. The club is an adult venue. It always has been. No, not what just What goes club. on I'm in the club is grown folks' business. Uh, and and even when you... I like when that you, argument. But. When you wait, like, listen, that's why they're 18 and up. Because when you turn 18, guess what you are? An adult, kind of. You're an adult. We... And then yeah. up until 1984, you could drink at 18. You can go get killed in the army at 18. You can leave your parents' house at yeah. 18. You could drop out of school at 16. You right. can get married at 16. But when you turn 18, you're a full-fledged adult by every legal, every legal document in the United States says you're an adult and you're responsible. So from the age of 18... That's when club entry is allowed. And hip hop music was is club music. And these songs are club anthems. They were made to be consumed in that venue. So when the artist is making a banger, yes. You know, originally what's on your mind is this going to kill in the club. That's and if it now. kills in the club. Right. But now, the artist, I think, is thinking, you know, this is for listening. Yeah. More so in, in what, you know, if people happen to dance, it makes it to the club, great. But I'm right. trying to make something to listen to. Right. Um, That's the big difference. I think part of the problem, too, is... Since YouTube has been available, the clean version is getting scrapped. Um, when you had MTV and BET, you had to have a clean. You version. had to have a clean version, and the video clean was even cleaner, right? In the mix show version, yes. And now on YouTube, you just turn on YouTube and there is no age restriction. You know, just ask you, are you 18? You hit the button. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy talking about YouTube because um, another music, uh, I think that I was looking at the successful artists. And when I talk about, I'm talking about successful artists, I was looking at like uh, 50 Cent. Mm -hmm. And um, if you YouTube, and I don't know if it's my preference that or the the tags or whatever that YouTube use or whatever, but if I Google, I mean on uh, YouTube, a Fifty Cent record, the uh, radio version come up first, and even on playlists like Apple and Pandora. So really, I have I have the hardest time finding a radio version of anything when I'm searching from Fifty Cent. You, I, I don't know about 50 Cent, but yeah, look, look but at you know what? Cent. That may be something that he did intentionally. That's what I'm saying, and that helped his success. You know what I'm saying? Because 
let's look at um, somebody who had, we think, more success than 50 Cent did in music, which is Jay-Z. Most of Jay-Z music, he might curse two or three times in the whole track. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, and and look how far he went. Like, it's, it's certain things that you can do in your music and still have the success. And I think the, the dominant down part just lets us know how far sh- stuff has become. Because let's not act like we're the only ones who consume this negative music that we're talking about. Right. It used it's to be a way to everybody. escape. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, in the night like you take in WA, it was a way for people who didn't live the life to live the life. Listen, man. From a distance. Okay, so uh, what is it? On Madden and 2K. I play those quite often now. Uh huh. Okay, on Madden, um, J. Cole's artist. Uh, two of his artists got tracks up there. Not J. Cole. And on um, NBA 2K, I haven't heard not one of those tracks up there. But I, what I do hear on NBA 2K more than I hear on Madden is the bleeping out. Not even bleeping, the silence in the track. So you can't hear the curse words and uh-huh. certain s- Because they know that video games are for children. And in addition to adults, but... So if you gotta censor it that much, damn that that music really has a hold on people that this is so associated with because and then you got but you gotta look at the demographic demographic of the NBA players. And this is the stuff they listen to working out, but they play it in the arenas, they play it everywhere. Right. It's not just being pushed like it, it's beyond being pushed on us. It's like this is everywhere, and this is what people want. And before you know it, you're being subconsciously programmed. Yes. And, you know, I like I said, it's, it's bad. Who ends? It's who, bad for us. That's what I was going to say. Who, who ends up getting the worst end of the stick? It's bad for us, man. <laughs> um, you know, like we, we talked about class. Mm-hmm. Gone out the window. Um, yes. You know, class is is just having a certain level of of, of respect. Like when you walk in a room, you demand a certain level of respect, a, cl- a person with class. Right. And, like, there's no class. You know, that's why when artists used to sing, they would say, fucking, they say getting it on. Yes. Because that's a classier way. Hmm. You know, using the F word is not classy on no. anybody's lips. Right. You know? It demands your attention. Yeah, but it's not classy. <laughs> At all. You know? Right. And right. people with a certain amount of respect feel like, I don't need to use that type of language. Yeah. And when you don't, you know, you, you got class. Hmm. You know, you think about a classy older woman you know, let's take Nancy Wilson. She was very classy to me back in the day. You know, you can't imagine Nancy Wilson saying any of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Okay. Diana Ross, the diva, you know, she carried herself with a certain amount of class. Yes. Lauren Hill had class. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's safe to say, so this is no knock on Lil' Kim, but she didn't. she wasn't classy. No. But that was her thing. She owned it. Yes. And and I'm not mad at her. There was a she had her lane. Mm-hmm. Her lane was raunchy. So was Vanity Six. They weren't classy. Think I'm a nasty girl. Yes. They the music wasn't classy. They didn't present a classy image. But that was by design. And they coexisted. With other classy artists, I can't think of a of a female MC with class now. Well, you know, you got Rhapsody; she presents herself, you know, very yeah. classy. But but when I you know think about Corla Ray, Sweetie, Ice Spice, Megan Thee Stallion, um, I could name keep right on going on and on and on. Yes, 
I seen all of the ass cracks. Right. At some point or another. You know? Um I was surprised. Doja Cat. Janelle Monet. Yeah, Janelle Monet. I seen her titties. Yeah, I, I was surprised I mean, she did that. And she used to have a certain amount of class. A lot. She 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 <laughs> lost it. Oh, but it's so glad she got out of them Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said she ain't dressing like the Monopoly man no more. <laughs> but that's but funny. you know, at some point she let her class go. Yes. And she did it for And it's attention. it's kind of sad because whether they want to be or not, these are your little girls' role models. Yes. And their role models don't have class. Right. N- not one lick of it. And they talk about yeah. or giving oral sex to a man. What kind of classy woman talks about that? Man. That's not, yes. I mean, I'm not just trying to sound like, you know, sound like an old man. I'm just saying that's just not class. By definition, that's just not classy. Right. You know, that's raunchy and low. Yeah, but it, this has been in the making, you know. And it, it's, it's kind but of. But you like don't hear Taylor it. Swift talking about that. Oh, yes, you do. I, I didn't oh. know until recently. She she has a couple, you know, of those kind of. It's not as over the top as, you know, I'm going to suck his, you know, or none of that. But she has some risque Right. Kind of stuff, you know. Right. So, and you know what happens when somebody who typically has a classy image does something along those lines? You say they're being risque. <laughs> As, as I did, huh? as you did, you know why? <laughs> because you look at her as somebody with some class who's yeah. just stepping out of their lane, that, that, rather yeah, than right, somebody who's class. raunchy and yeah. just doing what they do. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't gonna say class. I'm gonna say that white girl trying to be black. <laughs> like, let's say even even Lizzo. Lizzo, like, you know, as uplifting as her message can be, class, no. Oh, okay. Class, yeah. no. None. None. She don't want it, though. No. You know. So, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Where's the... So... Women like who, that, though. Who in the public sphere is showing a young black woman what class is? Michelle Obama. I was going to say the black man. <laughs> no, because they, we said it, making songs saying, no, we, saying we want a girl like that, you know. Man, I, I was saying, <laughs> saying that we, we showing them what was not class, right? I want a girl who, you know, I, and endorsing, and this is nothing against strippers, but um, and endorsing it, right? Like it, you know, you see dudes, um, like Zion Williams just got caught, like his his. His yeah, baby man, mother. Getting bad, man. I, I think he should file charges against the. Porn and then the, star, the, the porn. Let's take the porn star for example. Yes. Like, dudes used to want. It used to be a thing. Used to be proud to have a classy woman. Now dudes are proud to have a trashy woman. Now, he he wasn't proud to have the the porn star. Now the oh yes was, yes he, he was. was. Well. Cause I thought him and the the the, the pregnant, um, well even the pregnant chick was stripper too, right? Yeah, but they came public with their relationship, is what I'm saying, and that's what made uh, what's her name Mariah or something go crazy, right? And then the pregnancy thing came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I I just I was like, wow. But it's it's not just him. Like you know, all these dudes got porn stars. Yeah, and yeah, and. I don't know. It's like, yo, where, you know, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm not saying that porn stars don't deserve love and strippers don't deserve love. Oh, yeah. you know, because I'm not trying to Anything say, out, you know, outside of, yeah. But hey, you know, it is what it is, man. Like yeah. you got to think about the message. Hey, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, hey, all I'm all I'm saying is, you know. <laughs> Yo, you got to think about, like, I'm I'm just going to be quiet. Yes. I'm just going to be quiet. You, you all I, all I'm saying little. is if I cut on, if I go to, to the porn hub <laughs> and see your wife or your girlfriend, like, things have, you know, we're in a different, we're in a different place right now as far as the expectations of class. And, mm. but, hey. 
To like each I said, own, that, it's that, always been that way. That is that. Like I said, that's a whole different argument. That's why I say I'm not. I'm not gonna go there because, yeah. like I said, if you choose to be a sex worker or whatever, then I'm not saying you shouldn't have a boyfriend. <laughs> you should. You should. Everybody deserves love, and there's somebody for everybody. I'm not so, touching this. So yeah. So I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna back <laughs> off of that. But what I'm saying is. That's not class either, though. I'm leaving this alone. I'm just, I'm just saying by the definition of class. I'm just saying what happened to class. Yes, and because like even even the sense. dudes in hip hop used to try to present class. Yes, you know that's that's the reason we're talking about fifty years of hip hop. That's the reason we dress fly because looking fly presents an air of class, and well, you know. Yeah, but am I am I trying to be judgmental? No, that's why I went back to even saying should should any of these dudes stop rapping what they rap? No, keep on. I'm putting the onus on everybody else to flood the market with just as much, just as many options. It shouldn't be a hundred songs that. about sex, drugs, and guns, right? For every one song about loving your your woman, appreciating her. Right, right. It need to be a hundred of them songs too. So you know, I'm just asking for balance, and and for every raunchy chick, should be a classy chick out there, so that so that your daughters can see that that's not the only way to be an adult woman. If you cut on the TV, you think that the only way to grow up and be an adult. Well, what's an adult? Well, an adult um, takes Molly's and Percocets, robs people, holds big stacks of cash up on Instagram, likes girls and make the coochie pop. What's a grown woman? A grown woman wears bikinis in video, turn around, show their ass crack. We need... A balance, so I can say, well, that's one type of grown woman. Here's the other type. Here's the other type. Here's the other type in our community because that's not, you know, the only place you even see them girls is either in the strip club or in the video. The rest of them work at the hospital. They're your your mothers, your your wives, your aunts, your sisters. And I don't see them at the mall hmm. dressing like that. So I want right. to see reality, too, represented. And, you know, people always say, well, this is what it's like. No, that ain't what it's like. Right. That's not what it's like everywhere. Oh, no, man. I, 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 even, I, even if our community is 30% in poverty, that ain't what it's like. That means that's 30% hood stuff. What about the other 70%? They don't make no music. They probably, yeah, they make music. <laughs> it's just, it's just not, it, ain't, it ain't popping right now. Even from what you're saying, but I'm saying it is. It's just not popping at the level because they shouldn't even be competing with them. Because, you know? well, the thing is, you're always going to compete because it's all our music. Well, I, I Motown's think, compete with James Brown. Yeah, but you always got ones that'll do anything for the dollar. You know what I'm saying? So that and that's that's part of the reason why I say we shouldn't even or the artist who is making the more positive music shouldn't even compete with the artist who's making the negative music with that large machine behind them because they'll never catch up. That's how you, that's how you get so many discouraged artists and stuff. Is is man, it's somebody who out there who's rapping about uplifting powerful stuff just yeah. like Jay-Z say I ain't rap like common sense. Man, man, man. <laughs> because it don't come, right? Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, it, and it, that's the quick come up. You know what I'm saying? This, this should be but what's at the end of that come up? You go to the show, like, you remember we done had two shows about dudes that rap about that stuff. They get killed every day. Every it's not day even, be- it's not even, 
It's not even a big, as big a come up as you think. You might make a little money, but now your life's in danger every time you walk out the house because the people you rapping to don't care about your life. Bro, have you have you forgot though? It, it ain't about the money now. The message you 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 trying to live forever. You, you ain't gonna live forever. Moment. Yes, you are. If you have your moment, moment, and it's documented on the internet forever, you live forever. <laughs> nah, the truth of the matter is, when that bullet hit you, you ain't living forever. No, I'm, and in a few years, nobody remembers who you are. Maybe. Nah, that's that's how it is. That's really how it is. I mean, but how you gonna tell me that? And I'm sixteen, seventeen years old. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I'm telling you now, <laughs> man. It's, it's, Problem is, they're not gonna hear this either. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, they, they, they never hear this. You still, you know? They're not gonna hear this. Yes, and they're and, gonna listen to Vlad. They want to hear dude tell about you know, shoot, snitch so, on himself. So let's be, let's be in all fairness because the type of music that's acceptable now started because there were artists in the beginning who stepped up to start making that music to get to that point. I mean, at that point. And you know, and and the sad thing is, we fought for them too to be able to say this stuff. Yes, and then we got you know a we stood with we stood up for NWA and Tupac and Luke and Luke because we just like I've been saying the whole time, there's a place for everything, mm-hmm. but it shouldn't be the only thing. Absolutely. And when it becomes the only thing, like I said, we gotta. We got an image problem right now. We need we need better PR. Our community needs better PR. Yes. Yes. You know, because the 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 prevailing notion is that this is what we are, and this is not what we are. I coach basketball. You kids, I mean, when I go, I'm out here every weekend. I see gyms full of kids. A lot of them yes. come from terrible places, terrible backgrounds. You know, I pick up kids. Sometimes they come to the car smelling like a pound of loud. Yes. But they don't bring guns to the gym. Okay. And. The, uh, yeah, the gym always kind of been a safe safe space. So. That's a portion of our community. And you know how many kids are involved in athletics? They're not all rapping. Right. They're playing football and basketball, too. Right. right. Shine the light on some of them. You don't think they listen to music? Absolutely. Absolutely. You feel me? Absolutely. What about girls that want to be hairdressers? Hmm. Where's the song about the bomb-ass hair dudes? So what, what you want to use artificial intelligence to make these songs? <laughs> I'm, like, just, I'm just I'm just giving it. I'm just saying. Well, like, like you I want you to somebody make that track. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. And you listen if to you, music all day long. I listen job. to music when, all day long. When do you hear somebody make when outside of you listening to music for your your job? How many times have you heard one of these tracks? Hey, back in the day, I used to that's hear all I, kind of stuff. We talk about. And that's what that's what I'm saying. Now, where where is where is the variety? I it, I can think of I can think made. of songs about you know, like what about even just songs about fashion? It, there used to be plenty of songs about fashion. We like dressing nice. Um, gold all in my mouth. Right, gold all in right, my and the song blew up. Because where's of the fashion? Where's the rest of it? it that was it. Exactly <laughs> from him. Exactly <laughs> from. But him. every now and then, you you know, we pop out. I'm my Air Force Ones, my white tee, all that stuff worked. But it was we for like them. fashion too. It was, of course it was for them. It was for the same people, and they ate it up. And you didn't have to kill nobody. You didn't have to have. You didn't have to put your thing in nobody's mouth. Well, when they you didn't have to take a drug. Drugs. It was getting killed, though, them the them, them mics, as they call them in the city, the mics. Hey, it was getting but, knocked but, off. But you them. feel me, though? Yeah. Like, all these other things that we interested in in our community, you rap about them. People that are interested in those things, listen to that, too. We're wearing white tees. You if rap about white tees. 
If it's pushed down their throats, they'll they'll yeah. Is it whatever's hot? Like what's what's hot right now? Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I see all these kids wearing Crocs. I ain't ever heard a song about Crocs. <laughs> uh, would you listen to it? <laughs> it don't matter if I listen to it. <laughs> Dudes who wear Crocs or Rocket man, think they wouldn't. It's a monopoly, man. It's what's winning right now, man. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? It's what's winning. You don't even hear people making music like that. That's what I'm saying. You got. They have to first make the music. I ain't heard nobody uh, make the music. That's that's all I'm saying. Somebody got to step up and talk about all the other stuff that we are. Who has to do that? Artists. Thank you. Hey man, and there's so many of y'all. Here. There's so many of y'all, man. There's yes. so many of y'all out there. I'm giving you other content. It took an hour for me. You to know, you tell me you rap about drugs, and only a few people do. <laughs> like everybody ain't sitting around taking Percocets when they go to school. You know what I'm saying? Some kids go to school and they wake up in the morning, they dribble a basketball for an hour. Yes. Somebody make a song for that guy. You know what I'm saying? Man, Jada kids did. Yeah. <laughs> Saying, so done. the Curtis blowing little bow wow, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> that was a good one, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm off. I'm off all that. Zion, enjoy, man. Enjoy whatever kind of woman you want to enjoy. You know what I mean? Yeah, stop hating on that dude. Nah, I ain't, I ain't hating on. I ain't hating on Zion. He got himself in a mess, but she you know, he sweat all the time. I mean, it happens. You know what I mean? She it happens. Tweeting about him. It happens, and if you like strippers, or you like porn stars, man. By all do means, you, bro? Do you, you young? Do you? You know what yeah. I mean? Shouldn't have knocked her up, though. But yeah, but twenty four, man, two hundred million dollars strong. <laughs> you know they was gonna be out. He could have showed up with Susie and Becky. Hey, I will say this: <laughs> all them women you see these dudes with, they in their thirties, and these dudes be like twenty. So yes. don't don't sleep. Right, they got game. So I'm just trying to put you on. <laughs> man. That's good, man. Yeah, man. That's it, man. Hey, y'all. Rap about the other stuff we do. We out of here. Yo, it's Capital City Podcast. I'm Capital J. Long time my main man. DL Glass. You can catch us anywhere. Yeah, you break it down. You break it down. Anywhere you find your podcast, that includes uh, Apple Music, Amazon, yeah. any place that you consume podcasts. I Heart Pandora. Yep, we're there. Anywhere. Capital City Podcast. We out of here.